Hello there and welcome to episode 4 in my build for the Great Guitar Build of 2020. And um, in this episode I think we're going to be focusing mostly on the neck, although hopefully I'll get back to the body as well and be able to finish off the F-hole. And I've got assembled here the things that I'm going to be using in the near future. So here is the, the neck itself. Um, I've roughly marked out where I want the, the neck to be cut to. <coughs> There's the, the template that I've been using. The, the fretboard that we chose in episode 2. I've got a truss rod, I've got my crimson straight edge and then I've got a series of templates for different purposes. So I've got a, a neck template which is um, longer than a regular neck so it can be shifted forward or backwards depending on the, the width de that's desired at the nut. So I'll be using that and that pairs with a neck pocket template which is at the same taper. So again you adjust it and cut out the neck pocket according to the, the base of the neck. Um, this is a pair of templates that I copied from the course that I did with John Ambler and Ambler Custom Guitars. And then I've also got a, a, a router jig which I will be using for cutting out the truss rod socket um, or cavity. <clears throat> so there we go. Um, I spent ages trying to find my neck template because it had fallen down the back of a set of shelves but I'm now ready to get going on that. This is about 42.7 and I'm going to put that at the level of the nut on the high E string. I've sanded the fretboard down to a thickness of 6.8 millimeters, a little bit uh, slim because I'm planning to do a 16 inch radius on this, so I don't need so much height and I prefer to leave as much meat as possible on the, um, the main part of the neck itself underneath the truss rod to support that. And now what I've done is I've, I've glued my um, fret template onto the fretboard and I'm going to score across the lines because this isn't a normal parallel fretboard and I can't use my normal um, fretboard templates and jig I want to score the lines to give a guide for when I actually saw them out Thank you. 
So we're going to do a small experiment today. Part one of the experiment is sawing my thumb, and that's been done successfully. Part two is about the inlays on the fretboard, and I've got an idea of what I would like to do for the inlays, but I need to test it because it goes very close to the fret slots, and that could cause problems. So I have a piece of an offcut of the fretboard that I have sawed a uh, fret slot into, and I'm going to have a go at um, doing inlays next to it in two different ways and see whether either or both of them work satisfactorily. So that's part one of the experiment, the, the first method and that um, leaves that on the, the top, which would be the, the fret mark. At this stage I need to work on the fretboard, I need to radius it, I need to get the frets in and I need to sort out the inlays. Now because of the inlays that I've decided to do, the order in which I do these things is going to be quite critical and it's going to be a little bit tricky. So I've decided that first of all I need to deepen the fret slots a bit, not to their final depth. Then I do need to radius the neck and then do the inlays and you'll see the sequence as it goes on. So we decided that the um, sunburst type pattern was too much of a contrast in colours with the rest of the, the guitar. So I've sanded out the yellow and I'm going to try um, putting some purple in there instead. And this time I've remembered to wear a glove. So it's now Friday evening on the 11th of September, which means that there are five weeks left in the competition, which hopefully should be plenty of time for me to do the build, including finishing. And um, today I received my new Proxon IBSE, which will allow me to carry on with some of the jobs, notably the inlays on the fretboard. So you saw me doing a little bit of the preparation work for that. And tonight I'm going to try and cut out the holes. Just as an aside, I also, together with the Proxon, bought um, a number of clamps from Axminster. I got four of their bar clamps, 300mm ones, and four of their F clamps, which have a, which look pretty sturdy, and they have a, a neat facility that you can swivel the, the handle around. Um, and so I will I'll let you know if I use these and if they seem to be significantly better than the cheap clamps that they're replacing. But so far they look good. So in a small change of plan, 
I decided to finish the F hole first instead. So that's now done. I didn't film it because it's very tedious just going around it with the the brocks on, but um, I think that looks okay. So now that the holes are cleaned out, I can prepare the inlays themselves. Now the inlays are mostly going to be made from this aluminium strip. I think it was something like um, a strip that's meant to go under a door because it had a sticky strip on the back of it. It's two millimetres thick, which is um, ideal for my purposes. And so I need to cut pieces out to go in here. And um, each of these pieces needs to be done individually. They're all different sizes and so it's going to be quite laborious. They've all got different angles here, but there we go. That's part of the fun of it. Doing these inlays is a long and rather tedious process, so I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but here's a um, almost halfway update. You can see there's some cleaning up to be done afterwards as well. I've prepared a piece here which tapers by about three and a half millimetres from one end to the other and I'm going to use that um, against a, a guard in order to try and um, sand the same taper here. Okay that's not bad, there's actually a little dip here and a little dip here but those will sand out quite easily. I'm going to finish the fourth episode here. So in summary we have the neck which is taking shape. I have shaped the, the back which was quite tricky to take into account the multi-scale fretboard and the angle that I'm going to have of the, the heel. But um, that's reasonably successful. There is just a bit of a flaw in the wood that was revealed when I cut into it, which I'm going to have to fill with some dust and glue. But I don't think it goes very deep and I don't think that's a real problem. <coughs> We've got the body, which is pretty much prepared. I need to just um, make sure it's flat before I can glue the top on. And the top is ready to be glued on. So I think uh, we're making good progress and we'll see what I can do next week. Thanks for watching again. Bye bye.